Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Gumpla Quick Fix. In this episode, we're going to be talking about painting pilot figures. So for this episode, uh, the steps are essentially going to be very similar to what we covered in the first episode about painting, uh, just hand painting small details using enamels. I'm going to be painting just these three pilot figures, and for the, I selected these three for a specific reason, which I'll cover in a moment. Uh, I'm going to be painting them just with enamel paint, so it's going to be very similar in terms of like the things that you need and the process that you're going to do. Uh, it is going to be a little bit different, and I think this is just something that a lot of people are kind of afraid to do because like it's really small and it's really detailed, and it's kind of maybe a little bit difficult, but it's really not all that difficult, I think. And I should also say I'm not any professional at all, and I mean you're much better off probably going to watch some tutorials about how to paint like Warhammer, small little tiny figures, and things like that would probably be much more useful. But uh, I'm just going to give you guys my two cents on the topic and just show you kind of how I do it. I've painted a handful of them and I think uh, it's pretty cool. Like I said, I'm not really the best, but I think you can get some pretty good results with the way that I go about doing it. So I'll just show you guys how I do it. So the first one that I'm going to show you guys is this one. This is a 1-100 scale Riccardo Fellini. This is the figure that comes with the Master Grade uh, Finice Renesita. And as you can see, I've gone ahead and just done the panel lining on this already. I did that for when I showed it to you guys in the review video. And basically what that does, what the reason why I did that was just to make it uh, so it was a little bit more easy to see on video. But actually that is what I would normally do in terms of uh, when I would go to paint this because uh, just putting in all the panel line first basically serves as like an outline. Then It's similar like I said in the video before about uh, painting, hand painting small details. Doing panel lining first basically serves as like an outline and then when you want to hand paint uh, in the detail, and, or in this case just hand paint the whole thing, the black lining just basically serves as like an outline so it's just like filling in the space in between so that's kind of helpful. And then I also have this 1-100 scale Quattro Vagina figure. This is one that came with the Master Grade Hyakushiki 2.0 and the reason I selected this one is because it's a dark color. Now for the Riccardo Fellini I probably wouldn't prime this, I would just paint it exactly how it is right now. Um, spraying surfacer on before painting is a good idea pretty much always. The only reason I wouldn't do it for this figure is because I highly doubt it's really going to get scratched. There's no articulation or anything and the only way the paint is really going to get scratched is if I drop it or something like that. Uh, so I just the paint scratching or coming off is just not really too big of a worry for me. I would just paint it directly on here and then just spray top coat and that would probably be uh, protected enough. For me, but in this case, because it's a dark color red, we should prime it first just because uh, it's going to be hard painting some of the lighter colors on this dark color plastic. So, uh, in some cases, priming before helps if it's molded in a dark color plastic. Now, because I, I, it's going to be a pain to uh, have to fire up my airbrush and mix up just a tiny little bit of surfacer just to spray this one thing, I am going to uh, spray some surfacer on this one as well, too. So I will uh, prime both of these just so I'm not like such a waste of the surfacer. So anyway, and then the third one is a 1144 scale Hiro Yui. Now I just want to show you guys this one just because I thought I'd show you a 1144 scale as well just because of how tiny it is. I mean these are really really small if you're familiar with how big a blade is on a Tamiya side cutter. Here you go, you can see it's about the length of the blade, so very very small here. But again, don't be afraid, it's really not all that difficult as long as you have a very small brush and just a little bit of paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and spray some primer on the two 1100 scale figures. So the first thing I've done here, I just stuck a little tack underneath, sticky tack, so that I can be sure to paint everything including the base as well to get full coverage with the primer. And the surfacer that I'm going to be using here is this Mr. Surfacer 1200 grits. I usually use 1000 for model kits, but I'm using this a little bit more fine one, 1200, just because it's more uh, fine, so that I'll make sure not to fill in so many of the details, because I want to keep as many of those really tiny details as possible. I don't want them to be filled in uh, with any primer, so I want to use the uh, finest primer that I have, so I'm going to use this one. I'm using kind of primer and surfacer interchangeably. There is sometimes a slight difference, but I'm, uh, just don't be confused about that. I'm just basically kind of using whatever term comes out of my mouth. 
And don't forget safety first. Always wear a mask. All right, so I changed my mind and only sprayed a surfacer on the Quattro figure and not Ricardo Fellini here. And actually, to be honest, it was because I didn't mix enough primer. I really only mixed enough. It was just enough here to finish Quattro. And I just couldn't be bothered to mix some more, so we'll just paint Ricardo just as is. Like I said, I would normally just do that anyway, so that was really all we needed. Now, uh, basically, all you're going to do is just use a very fine brush. Just you want to basically go as fine as possible, especially for the 144 scale. So I've got just a really fine brush here that I'm going to use, which is just very, very small. And I could actually probably even use a smaller one, uh, which I do have. I may pull out here as well, but uh, the order is really going to be what's important. So for this, uh, I think what I would normally do is usually paint a skin tone first. Because if you think about it, like uh, like actual physical layers, um, like the base layer of what this person is would be their skin. So you basically start by painting the skin first and then paint what they're wearing kind of on top of that. So you paint the skin first, then next paint the hair and like the base layer of the clothes and then paint like the accents, which would be like the belt and like his, he's got like some yellow on his lapel and things like that. And the other important thing is to also have some reference images. So here I've got just, I've just, got an image pulled up here on my phone that I can refer to for the colors here of this Ricardo Fellini and for the others as well. One here for the quattro, uh, for the hero figure as well. So I'll use those just in terms of like referencing for the colors. So yeah, it's just going to go for quattro, uh, sorry for, I keep wanting to call him quattro. Uh, for hero here, just going to paint like probably his hands and face first, then I'll go and just paint his clothes. And then I'll paint just the smaller accents like his shoes and the inner shirt maybe and things like that. Or maybe the inner shirt actually first before the jacket. Uh, and that's pretty much basically it. So for the brush, I did decide to unpack this brand new brush that I had actually just kind of sitting around waiting for a good chance to use it. And now is a good chance as any. So this is actually a Tamiya Modeling Brush HF. I'm not sure the exact uh, millimeters of this. It doesn't say on here. I guess maybe it says on the packaging. No, nope, it doesn't really say. It just says... HF high finish and there's the item number I guess if you want to search for that uh, but this is just a nice little brush that should work here for the skin tone I'm going to use Tamiya XF1515 flat flesh Tamiya makes a few different uh, kind of skin tone colors this is just the one that I have there's a kind of a general all-purpose sort of white guy skin color which most Gundam characters are except if you get into some uh, other series. So this color is actually a, kind of a little bit more orange maybe than what it should be, but that will be okay. It's going to be such a small area, it's really not going to matter now. For this as well, uh, this paint in such a small little area is probably thin enough for me. I know some people pointed out in the last video that I really should have thinned the paint, even for painting just the small details. Um, yeah, for this, I'm just really not going to worry too much about that. So here we are. I can paint this in. So that's basically it. As you can see, uh, one of the eyes is still black there, which would be good. The other eye and kind of the mouth is details that I would kind of like to be there. So those will go back and just touch up at very, probably at the very end, just with a tiny little bit of black, just give it a little chuk -chuk there just for the eyes and the mouth. Uh, but that is basically it. For our quattro figure, now that the surfacer is good and dry, I can go in with my Tamiya Penaline Accent Color Black and just fill in some of these penalines. I'm just going to be pretty generous with this actually, just kind of basically give it more of a wash and just so that I don't have to handle it, I'll use an alligator clip here. 
Basically, just, I'm just going to give it a wash and then a wipe. <laughs> just going to kind of fill in just kind of everywhere just to make sure all the little details get filled in with some black there, something like this. In the meantime, going back to our Fellini figure here, I want to paint his inner shirt next, which is kind of a beige-ish yellow color. So I've got yellow and brown. This is XF64, red brown, and XF3, flat yellow. I'm just going to mix a little bit of these. I think it should be kind of about right. I may have to mix in a little bit of white as well if it's a little bit too dark, but we'll see. So what I just usually do is just take a piece of paper uh, just as a place to mix my paint. And it's never really a good idea to mix paint using a brush, so don't do that. Uh, I know I'm really only going to need a little bit of brown, so that should be enough. So there, I think the tone is maybe right, but it's definitely a little bit too dark, so I'm going to add a little bit of white to this. And there we go, that's even maybe still just a little bit too yellow, but I think it's going to be okay, so it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. So we'll see how it goes here. Okay, so jumping ahead here a bit, I've now got the pants and jacket and hair also painted on Riccardo Fellini. The pants, I just used German gray here. For the hair, it's kind of like darker gray, almost black according to the reference photo, so I just mixed uh, this German gray just with a little bit of black just to make it a little bit darker uh, for his hair color there. And then for the jacket, just use this uh, brown again. Then for my... 1144 scale hero figure here painted his jacket in German gray and his hair in brown and then I'm just waiting to paint his pants now his pants are kind of like light blue jeans so just gonna mix a little bit of blue we've just got flat blue here gonna mix a little bit of that with a little bit of this sky gray to just make some light bluish grayish pants now for our quattro figure I've given him a wipe down with a Q-tip with some thinner just to wipe away the excess and now you can see we've got some lines outlining some of those areas so now I can go ahead and start painting the Quattro figure here as well and according to my reference image that I'm going to be using here just have this of some other figure here so it's going to be mostly red I'll go ahead and paint the skin for around his face and on his arms and then paint the red for basically most of his clothes and gloves and then I just need to go in and paint a little bit of black there for his sunglasses, yellow for his hair, black for the belt. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, so after a while you're going to end up with something like this. Still a little bit rough and painted a little bit there on the face for the eyes and mouth, but it doesn't really look that great. Eh, unfortunately. Painted the shoes there in brown as well. So this one is okay, not really my best, but uh, it's not quite done yet. This is just going to be how they're going to be looking at the state of being almost done. Here's the hero one. The pants came out a little bit more blue than I wanted. This one also has brown shoes there, but they're so tiny, they're really barely even noticeable at all. This one for the face, I mean, you kind of just have to take what you can get there. It's going to be really, really tiny. And then the Quattro figure uh, did come out pretty well. Does need a little bit more, just last little touch-ups. But uh, last step was just going in with the yellow and just adding just a little tiny bit of those yellow accents there around 
his uh, belt buckle and on his uh, shirt kind of running around the color there as well so I'll touch that up just a little bit more and then the last thing that I'm going to do is spray these with some gloss top coat so then uh, as you can see this one's already kind of glossy just because of the red but um, the red is just a glossy type paint uh, but I am going to spray these with a glossy top coat so then I can go back and re uh, touch up some more of the lining just with my panel line accent color. I can't do it now because it'll mess up the paint uh, So I'm gonna spray them with some top coat go in and touch up on some of the lining a little bit more and then go back again with some uh, Flat top coat as well to finish them off. So we're almost done. And when it's all said and done, here is what they're going to look like. Here is the Quattro Vagina in 1-100 scale. The Ricardo Fellini in 1-100 scale. And the Hiro Yui in 1-144 scale. So that's just about going to wrap up this video. I hope that was kind of helpful or interesting or informative maybe for anyone who's interested in painting pilot figures. Again, I'm not really the best at it as you can tell and especially looking at it very close up you're going to see all of the imperfections and there are certainly plenty of them to see but when you step back and when you're looking at this like if you have this standing, if you have them standing next to the kit or something they're going to look I think much better when you're looking at them just kind of as a whole maybe with the kit and everything. Well, here, might as well just give you a look at how these are going to be compared when you've got them standing next to a regular HG 1144 scale size Gundam. Here's the Barbatos that we painted up in the first episode. So you can see the Hero Yui is the one that would be in scale. It's 1144 scale. The other two are actually slightly larger than correct scale. But just to give you an idea of how these are going to look, how uh, some of the imperfections sort of fade away a little bit when you have them actually stand next to a Gundam. So. That's just going to be about it, guys. One thing that I do want to wrap this video up with is that these figures now um, are pretty nice, and I'm proud of them, but I think I'd rather just give them away to one of you guys. So if you want to win all three of these figures, I'm going to give all three of the figures away at once, not to three different separate people. Uh, if you want to win these three little painted pilot figures, just leave a comment down below and let me know who is your favorite Gundam pilot and why. So I'll pick the best winner, I'll go through and read all your guys' answers, and choose the one answer that I think is the best or most interesting. I'll try to keep my bias out of it because of course I have my favorites, but I'll just try to judge based on uh, a good answer from one of you guys. So I'll just pick one winner and then I'll get in touch with them and send them these little pilot figures. So if you want to win them, go ahead and let me know who's your favorite pilot and why. So that's it guys. Once again, do check out some other videos about painting miniatures if you are really interested in this uh, because this is basically just the very basics that I've covered here. But I uh, hope that was interesting guys and I'll see you in episode 3 next month. Bye bye.